Hi, it's Chris. In today's video, we're going to be talking about remote control ceiling fans, primarily the parts that are in them and how they work. As a remote control ceiling fan, of course, there's a remote control that turns on the light, allows you to adjust the brightness of the light as well. It's going to give you some control over the fan and what speed you want it to go. To do that, you have to have a remote control and as well, you have to have a receiving box. These two items are paired together. Now the one you see right here, these are set for the exact same frequency so they can communicate. On some fans, there's a set of switches inside the remote and a comparable switch inside the control box at the top. And those need to be paired together. So your receiver from your remote typically looks like this. It's located up in the upper section of the fan up underneath this housing. So for this one, all you need to do is to loosen the two screws, lower that housing, and you'll find it there connected to the house wiring. So your control box basically has two wires that hook to your power supply from your home. There's three wires coming out of most of them, and one is your neutral, one is your hot power supply, and the other one is strictly the circuit coming from a power supply for the lamp only. As well, you'll find it has an antenna. So the antenna comes off and it's picking up the signals from the remote itself. So our next big component, part of any ceiling fan, is the motor. And the motor is built up inside of this pretty decorative housing. But this is what you find inside. So it has the mounts for the blades to attach to. It has your wiring harnesses for your module for controlling your light and for your reversing switch. And then the other part of the harness is what actually attaches to your house wiring as well as the safety wire which gets secured into the box so that if something was to ever happen and the mount that holds the fan was to break, this is going to stop the fan from crashing to the floor. As well inside is a ball bearing on either end of the motor. Uh, these give years of service without being a problem. Uh, eventually though, like any bearing, it may get a little loud, it may get a little noisy, and in most cases it's cheaper to buy a new fan than it is to try and replace those bearings even if you were able to get them. So the next component we want to talk about is very important and it's not very big and that's the run capacitor. 99% of the ceiling fans out there have a capacitor inside them. It's usually mounted inside the control box just below the motor and just above your light fixture. Its sole purpose is to give that extra little bump for when it's running to get it started. This is probably what you would normally consider a normal wearing part that they will give out over time. So there you go. Now you have a much better understanding of what goes on inside your ceiling fan. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.